Uh, Coach McIntosh, welcome to uh, welcome to the live broadcast, man. We uh, it's uh, you know I talked to a lot of these other coaches across Ohio. I didn't get to talk to any Falcons yet, so I figured, hey, we got to talk to some Graham Falcons, and um, you know, there's a lot of stuff we got to talk about because the Graham Falcons, off season speaking, are the most active team. Uh, probably in the United States of America, as far as the most successful uh, private camp system that's not tied into a wrestling program with the Jordan trained wrestling camps, right? That's what you guys do, right, Coach? Yeah, yeah, exact. I mean, it's been tough, you know, because we, I mean, right now in the state of Ohio, we're not, we're on lockdown basically. As far as I'm not allowed to see my athletes, um, they're not allowed. I'm not allowed to. We're not allowed to train or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, usually postseason happens as soon, two days after the state tournament. The guys are at the office and we're lifting weights, you know. And, and from there, we live three days a week and we don't miss. We go right into summer camps. And, you know, a lot of the guys work for Coach Jordan as counselors over summer camps. And uh, they wrestle all summer long. And it's very, uh, very unsure about what's going to go from there this summer. But, you know, looking forward to getting back to it. You know, it's crazy to think that um, I hear people say, well, Graham guys don't wrestle in the off season. Graham guys wrestle hundreds of matches in the off season, as a matter of fact. What is the crazy yeah. thing about that? Um, it's just all the best guys in the country come to you. Right, right. Um, that's a, you know, a lot of people say, hey, Graham guys, is, Graham, not a lot of Graham guys wrestle at Fargo, you know, and, uh, it's hey, you know we we don't. It's not that we don't tell our guys not to wrestle at Fargo. Hey guys, you know I last year I had Nick Hart wrestle at Fargo. I had Chris Kelly wrestle at Fargo. You know we'd love for the guys to go out there, but it's very difficult for them to make the decision to go out to travel all the way to North Dakota whenever they can come to camps and wrestle at camps and work the camps and see guys from New York and California and Jersey and PA and Michigan all over. So they get those matches. It's 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 tough. They decide, hey, I'm going to stay at home and train and and wrestle at Coach Jordan's camps. If you look on the walls at the at the facilities, the different facilities, you know the 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 house where you lived, um, where I went to camp, he still has right. that facility. Like you guys could activate that facility now, like in a day. You know, if yeah. you guys need to run twenty yeah. kids, you can do that there. You can run a twenty kid camp at that facility if you need to. Yeah, it has a full, fully running kitchen. I mean, it's up to code as far as I mean, we could we could run a restaurant out of there if we really wanted to. And uh, yeah, the facility's nice. We have plenty of mats that can go down in there and run them from there. Yeah, you could. I'm just saying, like you could do a smaller end of a camp there. But the, the crazy, yeah, thing I think uh, 26 to 30 guys we could hold in there in that yeah. camp. Yeah, and that's where I did camp. That's where I where I was a counselor for camp. That's where I did camp. Um, I don't know if you saw, I recently posted this picture of me holding baby Rocky. Did you, did you see that picture? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, so that's we what I worked. We were cracking up. He was like just this gigantic, dude, he was big. And then he almost died. Of, speaking of babies, come here. Get over here. He almost died. Uh, I don't know if you know, this is Ferdinand. Say hi, Coach McIntosh. Hi, hi Ferdinand. Man. How you doing today, buddy? Did you sleep good last night? <laughs> um, yeah. What's crazy, I don't know if you know this about Rocky, um, he had whooping, whooping cough real bad. Yeah. Uh, and almost died. Yeah. And Jeff, like, that was when the Concord Community Center and Jeff's house were the only two locations. Right. And then, so he was not having camps there that year, and it was like this kind of crazy thing. And then obviously Rocky recovered. And Rocky had a crazy thing happen in high school. What did he get? Appendicitis and an infection or what? He almost died twice. Yeah, he had an appendicitis attack. It was it was uh it was crazy. It was right before the Iron Man tournament. Had an appendicitis attack and and uh just went down hard. You know, he kept having some pains and then all of a sudden, boom, it hit and uh, ended up having to get his appendix removed, an emergency appendectomy and just crazy. It was crazy. But he talked about him being a monster as a little kid. Zeb, you should see him now. He's a giant. He's yeah, a giant. Mean, he's probably over 200 pounds would be my guess. 
Yeah, he's real close, but he is he is freak strong. You he's know. a mutant. Dude. You know, how, I mean, you know how they all are. They're all they're all strong. Yeah. How about he is? They made a joke one time. He's a. Uh, they put on like a bio that he was a bass fishing champ. He literally is a bass fishing champ. Yeah, him and uh, him and his cousin Tanner. They won. Uh, they won. I believe it's three state titles in Ohio bass fishing. <laughs> I thought it was a joke when they put it on the bio. I was like, "Dad, ah, that's that's not true." So they're like, "No." Dernlin was like, "No, he's a bass fishing fishing champ." Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Guys, um, what is that pond next to the office? There's a pond there. Does that have fish in it? Um, yeah, so I, I think you might be talking about the one down the road a little bit. Down on the road, that. that's what it is. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Miss Amy's, um, mo- mom's house, mom and dad's house. Yeah, that's, uh, that pond has fish in it. So I'm guessing they, they, you know, when it's, uh, in between a session or a lift, maybe they'll go catch a fish, <laughs> right? There you go. They'll do yeah. something like that. Okay. <coughs> mom, she'll, she'll start. Okay. I'll be in there. Okay. See you, buddy. Love you. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it was funny because, well, here, dude, this is a crazy story. Um, somebody, he took like, he didn't have a good Michigan State Open this year, and I think he was at 74. He might not have placed in the Michigan State Open or took fifth or sixth this year, right? And Travis, you wrestled NAI, right? You wrestled at uh, Cumberland, right? Uh, Campbellsville, yeah, I wrestled at Campbellsville. But it's NAI, right? Yeah, yeah. And... You know, I wrestled five years at Kent State, and I, like, understand how hard this is, man. I get th- how hard this is. Right. And there's there's people in our wrestling media, they don't understand how hard this is. Yeah, it's, uh... They're pretty clueless, to I be mean, honest with you. I mean, I could... I mean I, I mean, I wrestled at NAI, so, I mean, I know how difficult that was. I mean, um... But I could... I mean... You get into the Big Ten, it's dog eat dog, man. It's every week these guys not only in their not only in the duels, but the rest their wrestling rooms alone. I mean, think about it. It was, I mean, think about it. The, at seventy four, you had four time state champ Romero, three time state champ Rock, wrestling off. That was yeah. a wrestle off. Rocky you know won that? the I mean, wrestle off. Rocky won the wrestle off. Right. And the other thing right. about that is, so this person's texting me. Who shall remain nameless? I want to just shows you how out of touch people are and don't understand that, that, how tough this is. Um, Rocky Jordan took whatever at the Michigan's. I don't even know what it was, right? I don't. I don't even know if he placed. Doesn't matter, right? Let's say he took fifth or sixth or didn't place. And a person was like, "Rocky Jordan never told me Rocky Jordan's not any good." And I'm like, "Well, immediately." I, I mean, you saw the picture. I'm holding him when he's a baby, so I start defending him. I'm like, "Dude, this is really hard." What we do, what what these guys are doing is really hard. And the right. person's like, we never told me he wasn't any good. And I'm like, no, he's actually really good. I go, he's got a lot of miles on him. I go, he's almost died right. twice. You know, I'm like, you don't know, but you get my point, right? Like, right. for someone to be I mean, that out the, of touch and he, not understand it. He wrestled, he, at the Michigan State Open, he wrestled, what, Mal- Maldonado from Oklahoma? Yeah. He was very good. Yeah. Very good. Yes. He's ranked to the I mean, the guy at 74 was ranked in the top eight in the country. Yeah. I mean, um, he's, he's, what's his name? He's top. pretty tough. Uh, it's, it's, geez, a PT. He has a, a brother that's an eighth grader. He's from California. Mantanona. Mantanona. Yeah. That's it. Mantanona. Mantanona. Yeah. There Mantanona is. is one of the guys yeah. he lost to who's a top 15 guy. And then he, he right. lost his, whatever. But the point, that's not the point. The point is, I couldn't believe how out of touch this person was. And then I was like, I'm defending Rocky Jordan to him. And then, you know, he goes up to 84 and um, he qualified at 84. I mean, didn't have a tournament, but he qualified, right? Right, right. So it's like, so. the guy's cutting to 74 and he goes up to 84 and he makes the tournament. I, I think he's pretty good. And then, yeah, yeah, that, it, that's my point though. And it's just like, I couldn't believe how out of touch this person was. And, you know, it's like, you and I were talking earlier. Um, when we used to do the run at Jordan's and, and um, you know, I worked for Eric Burnett for 15, about 16 years and I worked simultaneously summers where I was down at Jordan's for a couple weeks and then I would come up and work for Burnett and 
they were pretty similar. You know what I mean? Like the structure of the camps, three, three sessions, a morning run. Um, but the morning runs at Jordan's were just, dude, they were just, they were monsters. They were monsters. Right. I know it's changed a little bit. Um, what do they run down now? Um, if you're at the office, where do you run now, Travis? Uh, now we just run to Nettle Creek and back. So, um, it's 1.1 miles. But I mean, it's still, it's, it's still the fact of this at seven o'clock in the morning, the guys just don't want to get up and go out and run. And you, you love to see the guy that embraces that and goes out, gets ready for it and just finishes the run hard. Now you guys are running 3.3 or whatever, you know, you, and you had to hit Nettle Creek Hill. That was a, that was a complete grind. Uh-huh. That would really. You would really see who really wanted to dig deep and win that run. Yeah, you know? I mean, when we did it, what well, it was crazy when we did it. We only had porta potties down there at his house, and then he had one or two showers. It was like really roughing yeah. it then, right? Now they can bring a blow up mattress if they want to. Now you have right. actual, real locker room facilities. Um, and yeah, air conditioning. We have yeah, air conditioning I mean, now. So. I remember I got but, like, and we still we still crank it up and get it get it all hot and you know um you know how your mats would always get all s- kind of sweaty and when when live session hits hey we crank her up but uh when the guys go to bed at night hey we can at least get them a little bit better sleep with cranking the air conditioning on you know yeah there, I don't just I just don't think there's a better camp system in the country and I I told you I was telling Troy Steiner that one time. He was like, what's the best camp system or what's the best camp you've been to? And I'm like, Jordan's. You know, I've covered the camp yeah. a couple of times too. I haven't got any of your technique. I'm going to maybe try and get down this summer or something if I can for a couple of days. And and if, if you guys are into that, we'll see. We can talk about it. But um, it's crazy because I, I, I don't, have you ever seen any of my videos of, of the techniques out there? Of like Jesse and Jeff showing Ooh. technique? Oh yeah, absolutely. We uh we go back sometimes. Mick and I'll come back and pull one up for coach and have him have him watch it or something like that, you know. But I always like the uh, we like the videos of of uh, you going down to the old wrestling building and you walking through the old wrestling building with him and him talking about some of the pictures he has on the wall, you know, him and Schultz and stuff like that. So does it is that old building? Is it like when your kid goes to college and you leave their room just how it was? Is it still the same thing? Is it still, is all that same stuff still on the wall? Everything's still on the wall um, in there. Everything still has its place in there. And uh, yeah, I mean, why? I mean, so it's like this. I lived in the, I lived in the old house and the pull up bar was still in the house, right? The the pull up bar walking into the bedroom is still there. And it's, and I've lived there. Uh, you, Jason Marshall lived there for a couple of years. Then I lived there after him. Now there's uh, other people living there, and they still have the pull up bar still there. It's like you can't take that pull up bar down. You know, uh, you know how many reps of pull ups that that bar has seen over the course of its lifetime? Hundreds of thousands. I would. Say. Oh yeah, tons. I mean, to be tons. fair, hundreds so- of thousands, maybe in the millions, actually. <laughs> So crazy. Right? Oh, yeah. Jason Marshall, he was state champion heavyweight for you guys, right? In like 05, 06 maybe? Yeah, back in the uh, back in the Joe Dennis era. Yeah, I was, their, I was uh, those guys' know, counselor. I was the, that's who I counseled. I was a counselor for him and Joe Dennis. Gotcha, gotcha. And then, um, you know what? I got a question the other day, Travis. Um, I was on a live broadcast with Joel Greenlee, and the question came up. Who would have been the greatest college wrestler? And this is just like, uh, who would have been the best college wrestler out of Felipe Martinez, Joe Dennis, and uh, Chris Phillips, right? That was the question. Was, oh, wow. And, 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 and So look, two of those three guys were Graham guys, right? Yeah. And, and Greenlee answered it off camera. He goes, well, that's easy. He goes, only one who wrestled in college. He goes, Dennis, he made the NCAs. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> And and I remember we called him Joey Doey. If you if Doey Joey Joey Doey we interchanged it, but like Joe Dennis was a freak, dude. Obviously, Bad Felipe dude. was too. Right. I mean, Pierre. all three of those guys in there were, were freaks, but yeah, Joe Dennis was an absolute hammer. Total absolute. freak, dude. He moved like a little guy. 
and ate donuts and but he was just like the guy was unreal and he obviously had some some demons that got a hold of him in Cleveland Ohio but I think he's he's out and, and living life clean yeah, now. he's back he's back good now uh, his dad always stops by the office sometimes and says hi and his dad actually still still donates to our go- our Grant Ramakun golf outing in the summertime so um, then Joe comes in and plays in the golf outing and they're, they're doing great, doing he's, great. He's a good guy, and he's a stud, man, you know. He actually, you know the crazy thing about him? He followed Stipe. So Stipe, it went from Stipe at 197 to Joe Dennis for Cleveland State, if you didn't know that. Yeah. So that's a that's pretty crazy. tough guys. Yeah, yeah, it's 100%. Crazy. It's so crazy. Hey, um, so real quick. I heard you still wrestle with these college guys, and you can go about even with a lot of them. I don't know about that. I, you well, know. When they said it, I was like, dude, he wrestles that much still? They're like, oh, yeah, he still wrestles that much. And it was actually Mr. Yeah, Audrey, Mr. LG Shucks himself, Hayden Brawny, said, he's like, no. He said, he still wrestles a bunch. And he's like, he said you, you and uh, – did you and Marinelli have real good goes or someone like that? I don't even know. I was like, no, there's no way. He goes, no, he rolls with those guys. He rolls with us. He goes, I have a hard time. I said, you can't just grab him and pin him and hit him in an assassin? He goes, no. No, uh, he's the assassin, Colot King, man. That guy is a freak. You know he led the NCAs in pins two seasons? Two seasons, yeah, it's Sound crazy. Southmore in his senior year, and then obviously he uh, – he he didn't get to wrestle. I th- I think the guy would have won the NCAs. I mean, he's a horrible guy to want to to have to wrestle. And if, and if you know anything, have you ever been Travis? Have you ever been to a, a D two NCAA tournament? Never, it, never. I encourage you, and I know you guys are super busy with your season. But if it's ever in Cleveland again, or they have it in Dayton or Cincinnati, or even Indy or something like that, and you can shoot over to it for a day, the amount of parity in a D two tournament would blow your mind. Really? Yeah, the number one seed means nothing. It means nothing. Right. It's awesome. Right. It's one of the best tournaments to go and watch. Because I covered the one here in 2014 when Notre Dame College won in a public hall in Cleveland. Dude, it's awesome. And I can only assume the D3 is probably similar. But like the D1, right. man, it's like the dude from Franklin and Marshall and if the guy from Davidson or Sacred Heart makes the tournament, the chance of them beating a seeded Big Ten guy is just it's just not gonna happen. It happens once once a year, every other year or something. You know what I mean? Right it happened with uh back in Cleveland, the eastern Michigan guy yeah. ended up uh Sidarion Perry, yeah. Maybe, like yeah, that guy yeah, he made, fun, he made right? a run at it. Were you at that? Were you, you know? there for because Mickey was uh, at that time. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I love I love the NCAAs being at the queue. I, I thought it was a great venue for it. It's an awesome venue. I just watched the last public gathering I went to, I watched the Lumineers there. And I'm like okay. I'm like I love this stuff. I'm like, I want Matt's down on the floor. I don't because it's like it was such a just a rocking venue. Um the, the the Pittsburgh one, if you were at Pittsburgh I did not go last yeah, year. Yeah, Pittsburgh is um, – it's hard to get around Pittsburgh. You take the first initial time figuring Pittsburgh out – I mean, I, I've been doing Pittsburgh and coverages in Pittsburgh since 2008. So I know Pittsburgh and I'm fine. But, like, for the layman, they opened the doors late and people missed all the way up until the middle of 125. And, you know, they do a rat tail round. So people missed all those rat yeah. tails, half the people. But, you know, the, like the queue is just the venue for me. But – you ever get a chance to go to the D two tournament or the D three tournament in the NCAs? Go. Obviously, you've been to the NAIA. How is the NAIA, by the way? Did you 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 were you an NAIA All American? Uh, yeah, I was a national runner up my senior year. I lost to uh, Brock Gutches in the finals uh, from Southern Oregon. He uh, he ended up winning four NAIA titles. So he he was tough, but uh, it's. Uh, Hey, that, that's the same thing, tournament. You know the way you describe uh, the way you describe NCAA or Division two and Division three. The seeds do not matter, man. They get in there, and those guys go. These guys start rolling. Um, you know, in Grand in Grandview is hard to beat. You know, Grandview is really tough. That guy has done an amazing job. How many? They're like you guys, you know, because we're going to talk about Graham's reign of utter dominance in in, in Division two Ohio State tournament. 
But they've won, I think, how, how many have they won in a row? Eight, seven, or eight? Eight in a row. Yeah. Eight in a row. And eight they in had row. it this year. They had it. They had their tournament. And they won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They won it this year. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So, Coach, my, uh, my Mitchell, senior Coach year, my Mitchell? Se- Sorry. Is it Coach Mitchell? Coach Mitchell? Yeah. Nick, Nick Mitchell, right? Yeah. Good guy. Nick, good guy and a hustler, obviously. He, you know, he gets it done. Yeah. So, we had uh, at Campbellsville. My senior year, we had a guy from uh, from uh, Grandview. His name was TJ Mo, and he he runs. He's back and he's back out there. At Grandview runs their Viking Wrestling Club, and he was a, one of my assistant coaches. And he definitely uh, he definitely brought some intensity. But you know, Frankie down at Campbellsville, he does a great job. Frankie James. So here's my thing with that: you're an NAIA guy, and and. Um you know, I was talking to Jared Opper with the OEC yesterday, and so many parents, and I know you guys have it at Graham, it's everywhere. So many parents are fixated on their kids going D1. There's nothing yeah. wrong with going, you know, D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO. The, the, I'm guessing your scholarship money paid the same as Rocky's scholarship money at Ohio State or Mickey's scholarship right. money. Yeah. The scholarship money's the same. You're getting a right. degree for in exchange for competing on the athletics team. Do you have that? Do you run into that problem at all? Like, hey man, it's okay if you go NAIA or D two. Do you run into that problem at all or not? Um, for me to say I do or do not is kind of it's kind of difficult because it's only been. I mean, I've only been the head coach for two years, so it's it's. I mean, I haven't really seen that yet. My guys that are. My guys that are, uh, you know, like Jeffrey Thomas, he he decided that, you know, he wanted to go to Mount Olive and a Division two program, new program down in, well, I believe it's North North Carolina, and uh, so he made that decision on his on his own. So he was fine doing that. You know, I think Jeffrey Thomas could have wrestled at a Division one school. You know, so last year he was my seat. He was one of my seniors, but I mean, last year I had a kid that wasn't sure if he was going to wrestle in college or not. Hey, he decided that he wanted to do it. He went to Campbellsville, you know. So I had a D two and an NAI guy go out last year, and then you know, you know now. I mean, this year it was Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly signed to an NAI school, you know. So that's that's good for him. I think he's at Arizona Christian, so he, he's going to go to Arizona Christian in Arizona this year or next year. So, but you know, during my junior class, those guys. My junior class is really tough. I mean, Martin's already verbal to South Dakota, and uh, you know, Nick Moore. Uh, Nick Moore could go probably just about wherever he, he wants to go. You know, I'm guessing we so. won't see Nick Moore at Virginia Tech, judging by the recent transfer yeah. of his brother, wherever he's going to head. He's, he's in the portal. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's right. It's probably yeah. not going to happen. But um, you know what I mean. But like, I, I, so you just answered my question. I mean, you got guys going NAIA and, and D two. And then, um, you know, even because everybody's so yeah, bonkers. Everybody's so bonkers about that's D1. there. I mean, look at, look at Hayden Brownie, you know? Yeah, there you go. That Hayden was the example Brownie. I was going to use. You know, Hayden Brownie went to Tiffin Division Two. You know, as Hayden Brownie, as a high school wrestler, he weighed 160 wrestling 182 or 161 wrestling 182, you know, because he, he was just, he, couldn't beat the guys he couldn't beat marinelli and he couldn't beat garrett jordan you know marinelli's at iowa garrett jordan's at south dakota state and at or at that point you know so and it's like now Bronny's a hammer in, at tiffin so well i think we're he's about to be a cop hammer he's going to be a police officer if you didn't know that he, i think he might get hired down there like sydney or somewhere down there by you guys so he'll be down there in your guys's area coach mcintosh so Maybe hit him up and ask him if he can come in and show some unconventional stuff besides head inside <laughs> single legs and head outside single legs and go behinds because you guys have cornered the market on the head inside single leg, I think. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> like, I know when it's coming, man. When I watch a Graham guy, I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes. They're pulling on the head. They're pulling on the head. Boop, there it goes. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, who's done more with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Bologna sandwiches, hard work, you know, runs in the morning and three sessions a day than Jeff Jordan. I mean, it's the proof is in the pudding, man. It's it, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, you know, yeah, no, uh, it's, 
Jimmy won the NCAA title. He beat John Smith with that move. What, the head inside single chase yep. ankle? Yep, that's what he did. Yeah, I mean, no. if, go back and watch it. I mean, I mean if, if I mean, this is a, a line that Coach Jordan uses at camp. If if this shot, if that shot will beat John Smith, guys, I mean, oh. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be just about anybody. Yes. I think that that's, that's an accurate statement and an accurate take. Um, Okay. Well, I, I know we'll somehow meander back to this. You want in here? Come on. Come in here. You can help me out with this next question. This is Thomas. Say hi, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Well, you got to hide from him. He's not very nice to anyone, really. But, um, okay. You ready for it? We're going to ask Coach this question. We call him the German. Thomas is the German. The German. <laughs> the German. Um, so, you know, you guys heading into the state tournament had eight guys qualified, right? Right. Eight guys qualified. You have won in Ohio in Division Two the state tournament. You won an 82 with the Jordans and Stickleys. Two Jordans, two Stickleys, I think, and then there's a couple other guys, right? And then yeah. um, 98, I know one of my college roommates, uh, Mark Lundsman was one of the guys. Doug Hess was one of the guys. You know, mm-hmm. they, uh, Ty Morgan was one of the guys. In 98, they won it. And then that was Ron McCunn's two titles. Uh, go, in there with, go in there with mom and brother, okay? Um, Ron McCunn's two titles. Those were the two titles. He was the head coach. And then 2001 to 2019, you won every title in there. 19 in a row. And then um, – since the state duels got sanctioned, you won seven of those in a row, and then this year was the first year you didn't win. You taking uh, Captain America with you? Go ahead and take it in there, buddy. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. Yeah, so you guys won every state duels except for one in a barn burner, man. Oh, my gosh. Grind. Oh, my God. Yeah. Barn burner. But, you know, you've won all – you've had so much success with Coach Jordan – Coach Ron McCunn, now you're the you're the third head coach in like 50 years, I think. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Have you ever thought about that? <clears throat> right. I mean, there was a there was a little bit in there um, where you know Coach McCunn kind of uh, stepped away, then he came back. But uh, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, Andy Stickley was a head coach for Graham, so I mean, it's been it's been in this tight knit circle as far as you know, Coach McCunn. Stickley, Coach Jordan, and now now or Coach McCon, Stickley, back to Coach McCon, then Coach Jordan, and then now nah, I've been lucky enough to take the reins. So I think you're the it's first just, guy uh, who's not related. Everybody's related something. there. You're the first guy who's not blood because right. the, if people don't know the whole relationship, uh, Jimmy Jordan's wife is a Stickley. Correct. They're, yes, her yeah. brothers were on that 1982 state championship team with Jim and Jeff, right? Right. So, like, yeah, so her brothers are, um, you know, Zach, Andy, and uh, and then uh, Todd. So Todd was Isaiah, or Todd is uh, Eli's dad. And then and Faith, Andy. Faith, Faith, right? Faith, they're twins. Faith's, Faith yeah. is married to uh, Alex Mariah. And Mariah. Mariah, so Eli okay. and my brother twins. Yeah. Who's married? To Mar- who's married to Marinelli? Yes. And then, um, then Andy has Justin and JD. Who Justin's at Iowa, JD's at Ohio State. And then, uh, and then Zach, who had uh, Isaiah, that was that wrestled for us. Um, he didn't wrestle for us this year, so he's going. He's going in the military. So JD was the one. If you watch the match with the St. V guy, he went to overtime because he, there was a bunch of real close takedowns they didn't give him. And then he kept hitting right. illegal moves. Yeah, so... Uh, he, got hosed. so he got hosed because he didn't get the takedowns that, that were given to him. But, like, you guys yeah. train guys for that. You train, hey, you're not going to always get the calls. But he was hitting, right. like, illegal moves. He kept hitting, like... Right. It was bizarre. He <laughs> figured for the head and arm and body... He hit he hit one uh, 
where a guy had a low ankle and he hopped, he went same side, caught the foot and tried to kick off. Well, when he kicked off, his foot slipped off the guy's arm and kicked the guy in the face. Yeah, that was and one. They called that illegal. And then, um, overtime. Then right there, then right there at the end, uh, he was in the, he was in a split the middle and, uh, he ended up touching his legs and called it the scissors on the head. I mean, he got hosed. So it was the second illegal move, so scissors plus illegal plus two, you know. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing, well, the one was in sudden victory ended the match. He got yeah, yeah, he got yeah. beat because he was a state champ as a junior, wasn't he? Yeah, he won the state as a junior, he won, won the Iron Man, Man as a yeah. senior, yeah. and, and then, then uh, came back. What's What's crazy about that match is they gave him the two in overtime and stopped. We were in inbounds, gave him the two, stopped the match. Then they went back and waved waved the two off. It's like if they would have kept wrestling. He would have even secured the two even more. What was wild to me was I watched it, and I was like, "That two you're talking about? It's as plain as day. He he guys the guy dead to rights. It's on the far edge of the mat. Right, it's not close to being out of bounds. That's not what I'm saying. And it's like." They stopped it, and the refs had, like, maybe a conference, right? They stopped right. it and waved it off. It was bizarre. I didn't understand it at all. And that normally doesn't happen to you guys. It's not like Graham guys, or the refs are normally out to get Graham. I don't feel that way, at least. Um, right. And I was, it was just so bizarre to watch. It was odd. It was super odd and bizarre to me. But, like, you guys put guys in the college um, room. Obviously, David Taylor is one of your guys. He's a four-time state champ for Jeff. I mean, there, there's not really any arguing with your results for the last 15 years in NCAA Division One college wrestling. Obviously, the Jordans um, have had, you know, both Mickey and, and Bo made the NCAA Finals. Bo's a four-time All-American. Mickey's three. Um, we could go up and down the list of guys besides just the three super good guys who are NCAA Finalists and champs that I just named. But why have you guys had a stranglehold on – on Division Two, and and did you feel like you guys could have won the tournament this year with eight guys? Uh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I knew going into the duels that it was going to be tough, you know, especially giving up two weights, you know, and uh, but going into the actual tournament itself, I mean, I honestly believed I had five guys that could win the, win the whole thing. You know, I could have won it. Uh, Gessler could have won it at thirteen. Uh, Nick. Hart could have won it at 26. Uh, then you got Nick Moore, Alec Martin, 38-45, and Nolan Neves at, at uh, 220. I mean, you throw Chris Kelly in there at, 30, at 32. 32 is wide open. I mean, it's so tough, but it's also wide open as well. You know, I had a good match with Rhodes, the returning champ, and then at the state duels, it's like at that point, that should give you – it gave us some type of confidence knowing that, hey, he's, he's right there. You know, Rhodes is projected to win it at 32. Chris is right there on him. So. And then I watched Neves. I don't think anyone was going to touch Neves at 220. I think that he was, I mean, let's, let's just talk head inside single leg. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 100%. I watched him in the Wadsworth he's... finals. Oh, my God. Hey, when he got you, he got, he got, you did a really good I job. Know. You did a really good job there. Um, the guy walked right by you when he threw his headgear and, oh, yeah. and I, I know everything in you wants to clothesline him. He just elbowed your guy uh, in the yeah. face. We've, uh, we've talked about, we talked about that a couple times. It's like, it's like, man, I'm just so glad that nothing, nothing transpired when he walked past us leaving. You know, I just, it was a lose, lose situation for all of us at that point, you know? Well, yeah. So. I mean, at that point. If he throws a punch or elbow at you or whatever kicks you, I mean, you got to defend yourself. It's just not a good look though, because I have it. I have I have the fifth and sixth place angle of it, and I have the third and fourth place angle of it, and I had two cameras going on the middle mat on the chair. I have four angles of it, and every right. Angle, I mean, it's good. It somebody's going to see what happens the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. No. I have video of it so. out there, and my wife's like, "You can't upload that." I go, "It's the finals of a tournament." It's, it's what happened. I don't know what to tell you. Because the Akron, right. the Akron, did you see the pictures from the Akron Beaker and Journal? 
Um, I believe so. Uh, somebody sent them to me. Um, a coach sent them to me, and it was like the picture of the elbow coming back and stuff like that. That's that's crazy. And it's captioned. It's it's a rest. It's a non wrestling person who took the pictures and camp- captioned it. That's like the best part of it. And the, the thing about it is, like, we can sit here and laugh about it. Is that your guy was okay? Their guy was okay. You know what I mean? It's just like it's almost like right, a no harm, no foul. And everybody everybody learned really was was not hurt. Nobody was yeah. hurt, and uh, you know, hey. Wrestling, your, your tempers get heated. We just gotta try to do our best control. Hey, I give Nolan Neves credit on it. You know, Tons. he uh, he 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 took it took it like a champ and kept moving forward. So that's just a testament to the kid that he is. Anyways, okay, where were you when the uh, decision was handed down the Thursday before? Because they turned the they moved the state tournament to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They made the announcement that there wouldn't be a tournament the Thursday night before the the beginning. You had your draws. Yeah. You had your draws. Not yet. Right? You had all that. Where were you when it all went down? Hard all week. Um, well, physically, where I was, um, Coach Jordan and I and Micah were fishing. Um, it was probably 1 o'clock. We were getting ready to get off the water. We were bluegill fishing. Uh, it was like the first nice day we could be on the water to, to go fishing. And uh, it was like 1 o'clock, and I got a call from Paul Neves, actually. Paul Neves is an AD at Stebbins High School. He gave me a call and said, "Coach, I don't know if this is gonna, I don't know if this is gonna go down. I just got a memo thirty seconds ago saying that they're thinking about canceling everything, and then it wasn't five minutes later, and I, we saw that they canceled the girls basketball state tournament, and we knew once they canceled the girls basketball state tournament that." Ours was coming right next to, you know, they had to cancel that one first because those, I mean, those girls were already on the floor, you know. So, um, there I went to practice. Uh, I texted all the guys and uh, I just said, hey, guys, want to talk after, or want to talk after school, come out to practice. I mean, they obviously all knew. They have Twitter, they have Facebook, Instagram, whatever. They, they know, they knew what was going on. And uh, I tell you what, that was the, that was the toughest conversation I've ever had to have with a group of wrestlers, you know, um, a lot of tears, a lot of, uh, just sitting there and kind of sitting in silence, just trying to control our emotions. And, and, uh, cause, cause you have guys like that freshman that want to make run at one and four, you know, that's just a testament to the, to the program. You know, Nick Hart's goal was to win four state titles, you know, and Alec Martin wants to be a three-time state champ. Why? It's, hey, he, he, he's made the commitment, and he wants his picture down in the, in the walkthrough before you go out to the state tournament. He wants his picture running across the screen when, when you're at the state tournament. Hey, that might be a silly a silly thing, but that, that's kind of the things that they look forward to. You know, He wants to be known as a three-time state champ and one of the most dominant wrestlers in the state of Ohio this year. That was his goal. And Nick Nick Moore, he hadn't won a state title yet. He's been been in the finals twice as a freshman and sophomore. And Nick Moore was going to win a state title this year. And you, you a, you're going to have a good match with McComas, and we're looking forward to it. You know, so it was just tough. It was it was it was difficult. It was, uh, I was in I wasn't prepared for that conversation. I just kind of came off the. The shirt sleeve, I let the guys talk a little bit, those that wanted to. And, you know, you're real devastated for a kid like Chris Kelly. Um, he just, senior, you know, he, he, he luckily he was my only senior. But, um, you know, something that, and you know the way we train. So something that these guys work so hard for. One of the things that we worked for was just they weren't allowed to go out and, and, and go and get it. Or at least fight to go get it, you know. What did you say? What 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 is there anything that you, that stuck out to you that you said to a certain guy or you know if it, whether your seniors um, how many seniors did you have on, of the eight qualifiers? Uh, one. One. So you got seven of the guys back. Um, what do you say to your senior? Um. Hey man, sometimes life's unfair. You know we can do everything right. We can do everything right, and the outcome still is out of our control you know 
So we can only control what we control. That's basically what I told him. I said, guys, it, it, we, we can't control this. Not me, not you, not your mom, not your dad, not the school. This is completely out of our hands. And sometimes in life, that's the hand you get dealt. You can't control everything. So we have to move forward. We have to get over it. And, you know, I obviously didn't say that then. You know, we, we, it's hard to tell a guy to get over it then. And uh, we got to move forward. We got to be there for each other. You know, just be there for your team. Be there for the guys. You know, there's going to be guys that are upset here for a little while. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take their emotions away from them and say, Hey guys, don't be upset about this. You know, they should be upset about it. The craziest thing is, um, and I, you know, I forget, I think it was like Terval Delagnav said, he's like, well, misery loves company. Everybody's in the same boat here. Right. Is there right. at least a little comfort knowing that everybody else is in the same situation as you? And this wasn't a Falcon focus. Hey, we're coming after, you know what I mean? Like having everybody. Right. And that's what, that's where that's what we talked about. It's like, hey guys, we're not the only ones. You know, there's there's sixteen guys times fourteen weight classes times three divisions that are out there. Their families, their coaches that are out there that are also all devastated. And, um, you know, it was a uh, it was just emotional. You know, we tried to say as least as we could. And my my coaches, my coaches and I, because we didn't want to. You know, we did. They were already beat down. You don't want to not try to beat them down anymore. And and they're smart kids. They don't. They know when you're just trying to fluff something up. You know, just trying to make them feel better. They didn't want to feel. They didn't want to feel better at that time. They just wanted to wrestle. The craziest thing about it is, um, you know, f about 15 out of those last 19 years, um, you guys have. And I, you know, it, this sounds like I'm joking, and I'm not joking. After sometimes about 15 out of those years, you guys have not had to come back for this. After the semifinals, there could have been a horrific bus accident. You guys wouldn't even had to come to the state finals. You were winning the team title. You had already locked it up after Friday night, the semifinals, for about 15 out of those 19 years. This was yeah. not. This was going to be one of those years where it was going to come down to Nolan Neves. This was going to come down to one of your. Hire Alec Martin having to beat Cumberledge or whoever, right? Like, yeah, this yeah, was like not the year where, ah, oh, we don't have to come back for the finals. And I know you guys came back to the finals and you always want to win state titles. I get that. But right. mathematically speaking, you haven't had to come back for the finals about 15 out of those 19 titles in the last, in this in this run, right? That, that That's true. Right. It's actually right. true. Um, it's like, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're looking forward to that. It's like, hopefully, I mean, Best case, I mean, best case scenario, I mean, as a competitor, what you want is you want the state tournament to come down to Nolan Neves and and uh, Blake Robbins, Graham versus Louisville for the 220-pound state title, you know. It's like, let's make that happen. That's, that's the most nerves you could possibly get. That's the most butterflies you could possibly get. And, hey, it's the two, or, you know, you throw in Aurora and they're, Two of the best three teams in the state of Ohio in Division Two, competing for a state title for a state title. You know, I don't know. It, it would have been it would have been fun. And that's the craziest thing about it. I was just watching one of the Jeff one of Jeff's videos. Um, you you and I were talking about them off camera, and I, they're pretty good, by the way. Um, what what are, what are you calling those? What's that series called, by the way, that you guys are doing with Jeff? Uh, wisdom on Wednesdays. Okay. So he's gonna go every Wednesday morning. He's gonna get on and talk about uh, you know, just things that that he believes that can help coaches and things that maybe coaches need. And you know, he's he's got almost thirty years of coaching experience between Purdue and being an assistant at Graham and being uh, the head coach at Graham. You know, the guy's he's, so he's pretty he's pretty knowledgeable about some coaching on some some points. You know. And, and, and the, well, the thing I was going to say is, you know, he talks about building relationships and the one that I watched and how all of you guys and whoever you're bringing as assistant coaches and when you were an assistant coach and he doesn't want you guys on your butts at all. He wants you involved in the pack practice, saying three positive things to a guy, even if it's your, your seventh string guy, JV guy, you got to find 
three positive. Hey, way to fight off your back, right? Like that's you know that it's still a victory right. for, for a Graham guy, I mean, yeah. right? But I mean, yeah. that's 100%. positive. That's positive, and that's how you build those relationships. <clears throat> and the craziest thing about it is, and you said it. I know how you guys train. I know what what the what it's dude. The playbook, the playbook is not. If I wrote down the playbook of how you guys win. Y'all work, everybody. You train all summer. Your guy is laser focused on those moments. But you're laser focused on those moments every day. You're laser focused on the Ironman semifinal every day. You're laser focused on the St. Edward duel every day. And he trains it in cycles. You train it now in cycles. You train for the Ironman, right? You peak for the Ironman. You peak for what other, whatever, G, uh, Greater Miami Valley, whatever you... He's got these training cycles, and you're doing the same thing. State duels, that's a training cycle. State tournament, that's a training cycle. And it's like he's so hyper-focused, and now you're hyper-focused. You know, you won the state title last year. You didn't have to come back for the finals. You know what I mean? You did that. You were the head coach, not him. And and that's the big thing I look at is, like, you guys live it more than other people. You live it 350-plus days. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> that's the craziest thing mm-hmm. about it is you're always preparing for those moments that, I, that, we're, that we're just talking about. Yeah. Everything okay there, so, Coach? You good? Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my little ones are getting up, so. How, what do you got? A, How many you got? I got, a, I got a two-year-old little girl, and I got an eight or a six-month-old little girl. You got two girls, so. huh? You're, you're on the, the Bo Jordan program, huh? That's right. That's you're, right. Hashtag girl dad. That's right, man. Hey, you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. I love getting home and them running up to me and giving me a big old, big old hug. You know. Okay. So. So you know, we know you guys were ready to make a run and, and win your twentieth consecutive title, right? Is that what it would have been, twentieth? Yeah. Okay. So and nobody got that opportunity, and it's awesome because it's going to be there again next year because Lake Catholic's yeah. bringing back six qualifiers. Uh, Louisville's bringing a bunch of those guys back. You know, so we're going to get to see it again. It's going to be very competitive again next year. Aurora, Aurora's got, a, like, they got, like, they have four district champions back that, are, that were sophomores. I think maybe five. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So we're going to get to see it again next year. It's going to be awesome. But the advantage you have over them is they're all, they're in a district where they got to beat each other up. You're coming out of, uh, it used to be Wilmington. What is it now? What is the what, district now? Yeah, it's still, still Wilmington. 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 Yeah, so that that's an advantage to you guys. And um, you can't geographically uh, request to be moved to to Alliance. So I would just take your advantage and, and, and run with it, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I mean, but you look at, I mean, you look at Louisville. They came out of there blazing guns. You know, Blake Catholic came out blazing guns. They I mean, the, the three top teams, they came out blazing guns. I mean, I know, you know, Johnny and Aurora, he lost he lost to Julius in, at the sectionals. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. He lost to Julius at sectionals. And, uh, you know, but other than that, they didn't really lose too many of their big players. Um, in Louisville, they replaced their 38 with, the, I think, a guy they lost down low. So it's like... 38 pounder ended up having a good tournament and came out, you know, and I don't know if they were expecting him to, to come out or not. So 2021 is going to be interesting again. I th- We're going to get to see part two of this that we missed with obviously this year, I, hopefully next year and you know, nothing certain right now, but let, let's talk about the future of the camps. You know, I'm alumni of the camp. Um, I've, I've been at the camps at all phases, man. Um, and as you can see, I might be as a, as a fourth phase at the camp. Coming yeah. up, you saw the two guys come in here. We got two two uh, two Miller boys there ready to start training at the Jeff Jordan State Champ Camp. Yeah, I don't know if they got I don't know if they got what it takes, buddy. But we'll we'll see. Whatever. I'm, my one kid's just a nice kid. He's kind of soft. But my little one that you saw, the German Thomas, you might see the German before it's all said and done. But um, let's talk about the camp. Let's talk about the camp system. I I, I and, and I've said it. You know, obviously, I'm biased with the Burnett trained camp system. It's a similar camp system. It's actually the only camps that Jeff's ever sent his kids to. It's the only camps that that Mickey or Bo's ever gone to outside of Jeff's system. So I'm biased. I like that camp system, but they don't run the weeks you run. They don't run 12 weeks of it. 
What's that 12 week grind like for you, Coach McIntosh? Oh, it's crazy. You know, I've been working Coach Jordan's camp since I was a junior in high school. So um, it's the best summer job for a, for a college wrestler. I would come back every summer, work all summer camps, and then uh, you know you stay at the facility. You get to train with the guys in between in between sessions. You know, I had guys like that. I was working with Bo, so I got to wrestle Bo every day. Um, in between sessions, we get a hard we get hard drills in or, or hard workouts in. I mean, I remember on Tuesday specifically; those were the days that. Uh, Bo and I would go out, we'd wrestle for 30 minutes, you know, 30 minutes with Bo Jordan. And there's a lot of people that wouldn't like to do that. You know, I, mean, I know when I was there, I didn't like to do that too much, but it made me better. But, uh, the, the summer camps are grind. It's a grind. It's, uh, waking up, uh, waking up, thinking about making sure everything's good to go for the day, going out, teaching technique, trying to be, um, trying to be as focused on making every kid at that camp better that you possibly can. And it's the same concept as building relationships. You know, we, we try to build a relationship with each one of those guys. You know, coach Jordan has a, has a, has a serious rule there as far as by the end of the, by the end of the week, he wants you to know the guys' names. You know, it's a lot better for me to say, um, I think it, it builds more of a relationship with me and that kid. If it is say. Hey, hey, buddy! Hey, uh, hey, good job over there, man, or something like that. Rather than said, "Hey, Zed, that was a great head and side single." It's completely different, you know. And number one, I touched you personally as far as I said your name. Number two, I gave you a compliment on the technique that you were doing right. I think that builds a guy's confidence. Hundred percent, you build a guy's confidence. Then it's amazing what he'll do for you. Yeah, I remember that. He was always, like, really big on you knowing everybody's names. That's, and I know that's, like, he's been a stickler for that. Once again, that's a part of that. this Wednesday Wisdom. Is that right? Wednesday Wisdom? Is that what it is? Yeah, Wisdom on Wednesday. Wisdom on Wednesday. That, that's something he talks about, right? That's about, that's, that is a huge part of the relationship factor. And once again, man, I, I can't recommend a camp more than other people. And I'm not some Graham Homer. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a fact, right? I mean, I don't think I've ever been yeah. accused of being a Graham Homer. I mean, my nephew no, lost in the no. state finals to a Graham guy. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Right. Come on. Right. So, if anything, you're completely against it. You know, yeah. I remember. I don't I remember know about, that, I, I don't know about against it, but when something's as real and, and as successful as what he's done, you know what I mean? I don't need to, like, sit here and apple polish. You know what I mean? But, like. The proof's in the pudding, man. I, I don't know what else to say. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is what it is. It's like the success is there because you go down there, you, you, you hit the reps, you wrestle hard on in the night sessions, you got to run in the morning, which sucks. Nobody likes that. And it's like life's not fair, but you learn a lot of really great lessons from going down there and learning some and getting getting some tussles in, in, in uh, Champaign County. You know what I mean? And a lot of guys get their, their wings clipped there. They get beat up. But that's a big part of it, man. And it's like, I talking to Jared Opper. Jared Opper was a four-time state champ, and he was 57-0 and as a senior. He pinned, like, some inordinate amount of the guys. And then he went and jumped into a D1 room. Well, don't you think if he would have gone to Jeff Jordan's camps, he'd have been prepared for a guy headbutting you and shoving you under the wall? Don't you think he'd have been ready, more ready for that? Yeah. I mean, that, that's what I'm talking about. And, that, and it's just like... It's crazy. Yeah, that's uh, that's. I mean, that's why you know the camps have been so helpful to the grand program as well. It's like you know you see all aspects of wrestling. You see the guy, the thrower. You see the guy that's the leg rider. You see the guy that's that's slick and pretty, and he's standing to the outside wrestling like John Smith. You know, but you also get the brawlers, and that's where we are. And uh, it's it's definitely helped us as a program, as a team. And uh, it's definitely then, you, then it shows it's helped our guys when they transition to the college ranks as as far as coming in and being able to be successful there as well. So we're in the middle, obviously, so. and this is probably the hardest thing for you to even try and give an answer to. But I know you're Josh's right hand man. First off, does he still have the Dead Sea Scroll with the, all the names? Is there it still a thing? Does he still have all the names yeah. written down? So, so it, it is a thing. It is a thing. And you'd be surprised at how crucial it is. I mean, it, 
just for checks and balances on making sure we have guys placed in the right. But uh, but we moved to online registration, so you can register online. You don't have to mail in a app- paper application, paper check anymore. So that's good. I mean, that's good. Um, so we're, we're we're transitioning to to modern times, but. Hey, it, like you said, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, with you know, around here is uh, we do things um, might not be the easiest way, but we do them the most effective way for us, and it might be harder, and that's okay. But um, that's just the way we understand the way we do it. So, but yeah, coach, uh, he still does, he still has his camp boards, you know, and uh, but that's what he's comfortable with. So you got to adapt to adapt to being comfortable. The names are all on a big. Is it is it a big sheet or a long sheet or what? He writes literally yeah, every right. name and every week down on every, a handwritten he, thing. He writes, he writes every kid's name, every kid's uh, kid's name, age, and weight, and state where they're from. So, and then if they're if their accomplishments, like if they're two time state champ or a district qualifier, whatever. Just uh, to build the camps, and um, yeah, it's a bunch of post- it's poster boards put together, rolled up, and you know, we pull the boards out, pull the applications out. Guy calls this the week number. Hey, that's that's the camp he goes into. Send him out a confirmation, and, and we're ready to go. Has one of you, whether it's uh, his wife? You or one of the boys put it into a Google Doc or a spreadsheet yet, or, is it, or Jesse Lang maybe? Did somebody? You know what I mean? Like, has that ever happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah that that one hundred percent happens. I mean, when we do check ins, they go in there, and then as well as uh, now, I mean, it's automatically generated. We everything is registered online. So if you were going to register now, you go to our website, click register, and it will take you through the whole process. So if you filling out a paper application to a, an online application. Are all the camps going to happen this year, as of right now? Um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. As of right now, all of our camps are going to happen. We're going to move forward, um, move forward, and wait for uh, wait for any updates that, that they're going to give. But yeah, one hundred. We're we are still planning on doing our summer camps right now. Yes, hundred percent. Jordan train going full tilt. Um, how nimble are you? In the sense that if Graham High School says no Graham High School wrestling room, can you just move that to Concord Community? How much is at the office? What's the capacity at the office? What's the capacity at Concord? What's the capacity at Graham High School? What's the capacity at the old farmhouse? Are you nimble enough to move things around like that if you need to? Yeah, yeah. If we have to, we can move them around. Um, You know, we've we've talked about going back to Concord, possibly. And, uh, so, Hey, we have, we have the facilities to be able to, to move things around and do them with. So if it comes to that point, then that's, you know, we'll make a decision there. And a lot of our, a lot of the guys that come to camp, they've been to Concord or, or wherever and they, they pay. A lot of our teams love going to Concord cause it's, it's, uh, it's a smaller environment and kind of really cranks up the intensity in there. I like Concord. There's actually a video of me making fun of Jeff wearing Jordan. Jeff, he's wearing Air Jordan uh, like high tops. I'll have to send it to you. Um, yeah. It, it, we're at Concord, and there's like there's like the bleacher side of it, and there's the stage side of it, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's like you're down in this yeah. pit, and it's and it's, right. an, old, and it's, it's an old elementary school. Yeah, yeah. And I worked there a couple summers. I mean. It's actually just like it's really cool the whole setup and the culture of it when you go to it. But um, what is your guys' website? If people wanted to go to the website and they wanted to register, are they too late? Can they can they still register? Or are you all full? Yeah, still register. Um, we're still getting applications. We're still getting uh, our team camps. You know, our team camps are our fastest growing aspect of our camp as far as te- uh, you know groups of eight or more coming in as a team and. Um, you know, it's it's a cool aspect as far as getting them in there. The coach gets uh, if you you know you bring eight guys, two coaches can come for free with the with the team, stay, videotape all the technique, ask us whatever questions, and, and we'll we'll try to help them out as best as we can. Teams are still uh, 
still um, applying for camps. Individuals, school boys, they're all still applying for camps. And, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're still moving, man. Um, you know, a lot of people get were, were scared for a long time of video being out there and our techniques and our secrets. And I've actually had people say to me, Travis, um, well, if you video my technique, people aren't going to come to my camps. And I, I can't think of a more silly thing that the whole point of going to your camp, you can sit and watch all the head and side singles you want on YouTube or flow wrestling or track wrestling. Yeah. It, it's not like going to the camp at all. Would you agree with that? Right. right. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I mean, yeah, all of our, I mean, over the course of the years that we've been running the camps, I mean, all of our, our not all, a lot of our technique is out there. You know, a lot of people have seen coach Jordan hit a head and side single, but it, you'd still be amazed, you know, you, you get, so, uh, you know, after July, you get college coaches that come and say, they say, Coach Jordan, I've seen you hit a head and side single. I've seen your head and side single. I know how you do a chase the ankle, but can you show here in person so I can actually see it and feel it and this and that and the other, you know? So, I mean, yeah, hey, there's videos out there, but there's, but Zeb, you know all too well, there's no, there's no feeling like walking in on, you know, Sunday night when Coach Jordan comes in and does check-ins and then you guys start cranking up the intensity going live there's a different aura that comes over the room that that can't be seen or felt through a video how about it's time fellas is that still the is that still the morning wake up the lights on turn the fan off it's time fellas oh yeah <laughs> that's still that's still coach jordan's words and uh you know those are the those are the three most dreaded words when you're laying there you know, you start to see the light come in the windows, and you know those three words are coming because you know when those words come, the day is going to start. You get to start it out with a run. Yeah. So I got a run story for you. You ready? Let's hear it, man. Okay. So um, we were at Concord, and the Concord runs different because Concord's a couple miles away from Jeff's house and the office, and it's not by Graham. So we're at Concord working, and I was working, and I was in college, and um, Jimmy Jordan was coming around, and he was like kind of working out, and he was showing technique, and this is like 2001, right, man? This guy, he's not in Congress yet, and obviously he right. he's, he's, uh, does a better job of making liberals angry right now, and you know, being a guy in uh, you know the Congressional District 4, and he's a politician now, he lives in... He's in D.C. and Urbana and back and forth, right? He's all over. Um, so right. um, he was there, and he's like, I'm going to do the run this morning. And I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. So we did the run, and I, like, I'm like, i running with him. I'm talking to him. and I, So it's just like an old track trick I used. And I'm like 20, right? He's 40 or something, 30, 38 or 37. And I ran right with him, right next to him. And then, like, I let him take the lead, and I, like, kind of used him as a wind block. And then we got to the last mm -hmm. like 200 meters and I dusted him, right? And um, and like I told you, you wouldn't know that you wouldn't know that I could run distance. But so I dusted him, right? And uh, he gets up and oh, oh golly gee, shucks, Zebenezer, I'm gonna get you tomorrow. I'm gonna get you tomorrow. And I think we ran again and I did the same thing. I dusted him again. And then and then nobody, there's nobody to ride the bike. And for round three of, of beating him again, because you know how competitive they are. They don't want to lose at anything. They, they don't want to lose at tiddlywinks, right? They don't want to lose at Uno. Right. There's whatever. I'm gonna, yeah, you I'm, I'm going to get you tomorrow, Zebenezer. And I'm like, well, I'm 20 and you're older and I'm, I'm, and I'm fast. So, no, you'll never, probably never beat me. But I was looking forward to dusting him a third time. And Jeff's like, Miller, you're on the bike today. And I had to ride back and forth up and road up the road to make sure you know there's kids that puke and kids who walk yeah. and you know you got to make sure the last kid gets in doesn't get hit by a car. So I didn't get the chance to dust Jimmy for the third time. I don't think I can get him anymore. I'm 255 pounds. I don't think I think he can he can get it, uh, he can exact his revenge on me now if he wants to. <laughs> oh yeah, you still uh, when he's a, when he's around you still or when he's a, a here in Urbana. You can still see him uh, sometimes, uh, him out running. He runs Nettle Creek 
runs Nettle Creek Road. He's a maniac. This guy's a maniac. Now, Jeff's not a runner. Jeff just <laughs> rustles everyday stuff. Hey, I heard Jeff still does the Aerodyne with the plastics on. Is that true? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, he still rides the Aerodyne. Uh, you know, he tries, uh, he, he cranks it, man. But uh, one thing he, he used to do um, was ride a mountain bike. And uh, we just got some just got some new mountain bikes. And uh, we got a, a little bit of a road course of laps that we do. And it's brutal. It's brutal. So Riding bikes is awesome. I got an Aerodyne, like, sitting right next to me right here. And yeah. um, I've been hitting the road a lot lately. I've hit in the road, like, like three days a week and dude it hurts my knees so bad it hurts my patella tendons in the front so bad i mean uh -huh. you're 255 pounds and you're still running in between nine and ten minute miles eight and ten minute miles which is what i try and do it's hard you know what i mean it's a lot of think about the pounding if you add that up yeah. it's a lot of yeah, get, get you a bike because i haven't no, started biking i do i got i have a road bike but i still like to run it's it's like an illness yeah, or right. something you know it's like but there's nothing like um, running on the road. It's 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 harder than anything. You run on a treadmill and you run on the road. They're not the same thing. I don't care what anybody right. says. Well, I don't like running on the road because you can. I mean, I obviously I'll do it, but you can't. You can never beat the road, Zeb. You'll never beat it. The road's always gonna win. You're right. Like am the I, road is always gonna win. Yeah, and it's like when you're, you know, when you're two fifty plus, like I am. It's it's not good. That pounding's not good. It's you're we're not made for that pounding. And it, my wife's like, just start doing the aerodyne more. And she's like, right. <laughs> she's not wrong. You know what I mean? She's, she's right. I just got to start doing that. But um, okay. What's the website by the way? If people want to see the Train. website, Jordan, yeah, JordanTrain.com. JordanTrain.com, and uh, you guys can visit visit the JordanTrain.com. You'll see uh, all of our camps, how to register. And, uh, you know, our JT gear, obviously, you know, the Jesus train shirts are on there. So those are, those are hot commodities, you know? Uh, right now, obviously Rudis makes all your stuff. How is that, uh, relationship going and how is the gear market for you guys with the relationship between Rudis and Jordan train? Oh, it's outstanding. You know, obviously coach Jordan is an owner in Rudis. So coach Jordan, Jesse and, and Tommy. They're, they're owners in Rudis, and, uh, you know, Rudis takes good care of us, obviously, you know, for the, for the Jordan camps as well as for uh, Graham Wrestling, and, um, you know, we we support Rudis, and Rudis supports us, and it's great. Okay, are you still working with my partner, Guy Seiko and Defense Soap? Do you guys still def sell Defense Soap at Jordan Trade Wrestling yeah. Camps? We don't sell Defense Soap at at, at the Jordan camps, you know, we sell those soap, wipes, and bars of soap, and uh, it's great. You know, I tell you what, he, he, you call him for an order, and then you get it the next day. Dude. Always. They are top-notch, top of the line. You know, they're a big part of what I do. I wouldn't be doing wrestling media anymore. I don't even work with Flow Wrestling anymore. But my YouTube channel and Defense Soap, and then, you know, I work with Barbarian Apparel. You guys are rudest, but... You know, between those partners and me, like, that's what keeps me going, you know. But, like, Guy, Guy Seiko is what a wrestler doing business is all about. And I, I know you agree. You just said it. I mean, right. it's amazing, yeah. man. But, okay, when's the first week of camp? When's the last week of camp? When, are we gonna, when can we expect, expect it to be started? Uh, the first week of camp is going to start, uh, what is it, May 31st through June 3rd or something like okay. that. May 30th through June 3rd. Um, whatever that Sunday through Thursday is, and then we'll run all the way through August 2nd through the 6th. Um, so 10 weeks of, uh, of grinding in there. We'll have three schoolboy camps as well. And, uh, hopefully we'll be able to also crank out a girls camp this year. All girls, all girls camp. Nice. That's awesome. Your girl, Dave. Yeah. You, I could only see you, uh, yeah, 100%. understanding the value in that. I like that. That's good that you guys are, are moving forward with, uh, the, the movement. So, um, all right. You got anything else for me? That's it, man. Hope go out and have a good day today. Get yeah. outside. It's supposed to be a nice day. So we're going to hike. Okay. I'm going to cut the live feed and I'm going to cut the, uh, the video here. Stick around real quick. I want to talk to you off camera and, uh, we'll tie this up. All right, coach. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for the time. Good luck to you guys moving forward. And, uh, then we'll talk a little bit more here. All right.